And it looks like we're live. With an upper episode, an upper path. Can't talk today, apparently. Another episode of the Caribou live stream. Is there anyone in chat? Can't see anything in chat yet, so I don't know that it's actually live. Can anyone confirm? Yes. Wonderful. Hello, 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 everyone. Nice to see you all. Right. Do we wait a little bit while people join or do we just get on the way? So let's just do a quick summary of what sort of happened last time. So this is the Caribou Mark 3S. Well, this is part of it. We've started, obviously, a significant amount of the assembly already, and that was what we did in last week's live stream. So for a couple of hours, we went through literally from square one, getting all the parts, which are all kind of sitting on the table behind me. You can still just see there's still quite a bit to go. So we're going to be carrying on, and it looks like, well, judging by what the manual says, that we're going to start working on the Z-axis assembly. So this, you can see, is kind of the, the Y-axis Fairly standard for what you would expect for something that looks mildly like a Prusa, a Prusa machine. So, of course, I have to thank Martin, whose machine this actually is. It doesn't belong to me. I'm building it for him and then passing it on. So, yes, wonderful. Thank you very much to him. And we've got, oh, yeah, there you go. Martin Stevenson is here. And then you've got Wolfgang Shadow, who's the owner of Caribou. So if you have any questions about the machine specifically, I'm sure he'll be more than happy to answer those. So thank you, Wolfgang, for joining the stream. Very much appreciated. Wonderful. Lots of people here. I guess it's about time to get started. I've got gloves again. Don't necessarily need them, but sometimes the oils and stuff makes my hands itchy, so I tend to if it does get a bit oily. But looks like we're not going to have... Too much oily stuff to do, hopefully, to begin with. Cool. So, view shape, I think, is going to be a little bit lower, especially for the first half of the stream, while um, 3D Maker Noob is also doing a live stream. Uh, he's unboxing a... I can't remember what it is. A different printer. So, I imagine maybe we'll have some more people join once he finishes. That would be wonderful. But for now, thank you, obviously, everyone for joining so far. Let's get into it. So we've got hopefully this other view where everyone can see all different angles. So hopefully don't we, we don't miss anything that's going on. It's much easier for me to control things by just <laughs> pointing the camera at everything and hope one of them captures it. <laughs> is everything, looks like the top one is maybe a little bit out of sync. Ah, it's only a little bit. I think it'll be fine. So. This little timer is where we got to. It's actually, total build time is actually eight minutes more than that. It's, I'm not doing it just because it's a race. It's just useful for me as a reference to see how long it actually took. So let's start that. And we'll carry on with the Z axis assembly. So we should have pretty much all the parts here already. So this is actually the 320 mil Z. Um, for this printer, it comes in a few different versions. They're all basically the same apart from the Z height. And yes, so the extrusions that I have may be slightly longer than we get in other kits that are shorter. Oh, the other bearings. Should I do that now? So I guess if we've got time now, we could probably put them in IPA first. Is that what you're, uh, is that what's uh, suggested? So presumably these longer ones. They are very oily. <laughs> time it didn't start. Yeah, it did. This is two hours, five minutes. That you can only really see the seconds going, so it probably doesn't look like it's changing much. But it, it, it is, uh, it is moving. Uh, 
Oh yes, for uh, I'll have I'll use the gloves for when I'm doing the bearings. They'll hopefully be a little bit later. I'm not sure. We'll get there when we get there. I don't think we need to rush. Let's just follow the instructions and we'll be there when we get there. So it's obviously marked with all the little parts as well so you know what you need ahead of time. I've got all the screws and stuff laid out in front of me. You can hopefully see those. So I don't need to necessarily get things. They're just here when they're here. <coughs> Excuse me. So all the parts come nicely packaged in all sorts of different bags and uh, bubble wrap depending on what the components are. All the parts are really printed nice and rigid. The push ones you tend to find that they, because obviously they're doing really large mass production, they really try to optimize it and they make the walls of the parts and the overall mass quite low and skinny and slim. Whereas these ones are nice and thick and chunky, so that'll help the whole assembly stay nice and rigid. You must prepare both Z motor mounts like this. Insert an M6 by 12 screw into the back of the holder. You know what, I'm gonna put the gloves on anyway, <laughs> just because the screws and stuff have oil and things in them. Ready for medical work. They won't catch my fingerprints like this. Um, so yes, what was I talking about? Yeah, so a couple of these and some T-slot knots by the look of it. So we have to identify, obviously one's left, one's right. The screw goes in the back, so that's gonna be in here. Oh, I was sort of on the camera anyway. It's really difficult to, with so many cameras, it's difficult to kind of recognize which one exactly <laughs> is pointing in what direction. Tolerances on that seem rather tight. Let's try and push it in a bit. There we go. And the other one. I've not put those in very far at the moment, but it's just that should help me assemble them nice and easily. Uh, I'm preparing some corner brackets. Now, these are one of the things that I did sort of prepare a little ahead of time, just because I don't think anyone wants to watch me putting screws and nuts together for most of the stream. Probably could have done these as well, but I missed that obviously when I scrolled through. Continue the XY frame that was assembled so far. Make sure, oh, so they're kind of prepared, if you like, ready to go, but we don't need them right yet. That stuff we can move to the side. So hopefully I've got a slightly better view as well on the overhead camera. I've used more of the desk width, so you can't see the laptop so much because you don't need to. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> this is what we're doing. So it looks like these are the same in all orientations. So it doesn't matter which way around they go. That's very nice. <laughs> hello from Africa. I mean, no, I say hello from UK. Welcome from UK to Africa. Uh, I'm, I just skip ahead. Uh, continue the XY frame. Make sure one of the T nuts is in front of the hole and one is behind. Easy peasy. Place the Z extrusions over the hole and fasten from below. Only tighten loosely. <laughs> Got some other screws, just other nuts rather, just moving around somewhere on the frame.
There we go. That's definitely not the right one. Okay, it's just very loose. Let's flip it around and do this other one. Same process, just push this up from the base. Good evening from Hungary. Blimey, we've got the whole world joining in today. So it's really odd to see how far across the world people watch the live stream from. Oh, and the rest of my videos for that matter. I know the like the, most of the audience is US and UK. I think then it's followed by Germany and Australia or Germany and other European countries. I can't really remember. But yeah, obviously people join from everywhere, which is very nice to see. So only tighten those loosely. Of course. Slide the right Z motor holder and a corner bracket onto the extrusion slot. Tina goes into the slot. Of course it does. So of course that makes sense why this nut is here. So that's the short side, this is that, that is this, so that goes, that's the left one, this will be the right one. So slot this into here, into here, like so, and this into here, like so. Well, doesn't that look dandy? I'm surprised the motor goes in from inside edge rather than the outside edge. I suppose it looks nicer coming in from that side. Uh, presumably, oh yeah, I guess with this area here, there's plenty of room. Make sure the corner bracket and the motor holder sit flush in the XY frame and fasten the, M fasten the M6x12 screws that are attached to the T-nuts. Can do. Hi from Sweden. I don't know why, should I read what is there or should I just respond? I never know quite how to do this. Welcome to the stream from Sweden to the Sweden. Welcome to Sweden. That sounds like I'm welcoming you into Sweden. That would be bizarre. <laughs> I feel like this live stream's gone mildly off topic. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> carrying on, make sure the T-nuts in the XY frame sit under the hole of the motor and then more m 6 x screws, hold them into the thing. Do the same for the corner. Don't tighten these screws yet you should still be able to move the wire extrusion back and forth by about one millimeter. No. I could in theory, but I can't. I guess my version of not tight was tighter than required. Excellent. One millimeter of movement approximately. I'm guessing we're supposed to rotate it now. Now comes the now comes the important step in order to get a square frame. It needs to be ensured that both the z-axis have the same distance to the back. Use the z-alignment tool and slide it into the x extrusions on the back. Press the z-extrusion to the back so that it touches the alignment tool. So not going anywhere yet. We have in here another tool, 
So we used this one previously to align the rods. And then we've got this blue one. Presumably they come in all sorts of colors just because the color is not important. So they use whatever's left over. It's not obviously going to appear on the final print. Then it's useful to see that you know that this is not going on because it's a different color. Anyway, this is the Z one. So that's presumably going to sit on like that. Squeeze into there. Very nice. So applying presumably a bit of pressure on there, passing this down, and then this into here. Here. Am I allowed to do it tightly? Fasten the corner bracket, fasten the front side of the motor, make sure the Z extrusion. Yeah, I think that's flush. It's kind of difficult to tell so easily when you're wearing gloves, but Seems reasonably flush. Nice. Fasten the M8 by 40 screw of the Z axis extrusion. Oh, yes, of course, the one below. Uh, I might try That's plenty tight enough. I'm guessing now we're switching around. Yeah, so now we do the other side. So this, we should loosen, loosen off a little. Like so, perfect. Slide the motor mount onto the top. Oh, for some reason I can't. And then this over the back. Uh, apologies if I'm missing some of this string. Oh, some of the chat rather. Uh, what's up with the gloves? Uh, oils quite often make my hands itchy, so I sometimes wear gloves. It's not something you have to do, it's just something I do because, because I do. <laughs> Don't need this yet, we're not on quite on that stage. First we're doing the front and back. Cool. Now we can get the screws in. Not here. So we've got that movement back and forwards. Now we can go with the alignment print, the alignment print rather. That wobbles because the foot's not quite on the table, by the way, not because the frames are wobbling. Let's just check these are all tight.
looking pretty good. Happy with that. After completing the motor and Z-axis assembly, your frame should look like this. Yep, I'd say it looks just like that. Z-motors and rods installation. So... There's <laughs> two lengths of rod left, and I'm not sure which one we need at the moment. I should say the four... 422 millimeters. But I think both of my measuring tapes are in the other room. Well, we can just, uh, I know. It looks like it could be that height. I think this one, oh, I think this one's going to look too long. That goes way above the top. That looks more like this. Yes. So by process of elimination, I select these two as being 422 millimeters. And then in here we should have some Z motors with long lead screws attached. Hmm. I can get them out. There we go. Right, one motor left in there. That'll be our X axis motor. So we've got those, we've got those, and then it's just oh, a couple of little prints. I wonder what the bag they be in. Not that one. Maybe this one? Doesn't look like this one. Ah, maybe this one? Nope. Maybe it is this one. I'm pretty sure we have them because I'm pretty sure I've seen them. Now, where have they gone? This is bizarre. Have I put them down somewhere on the workbench and I've... Um, where the dickens have those gone then, hey? What I'm looking for, by the way, not that you can particularly help me look, is that they go um, on here, right at the base of the lead screw, and I think they're there to stop dust getting in, or any particles or bits of filament getting stuck in the lead screw motor. But I'm not sure where they've gone. I could have sworn I'd seen them, so I'm sure they'd be here. Oh, 
that, not that. Yeah, I was going to ask what bag they're in, but I've changed. Yeah, I, re I do remember them being black. I'm pretty sure I've seen them. What the? Ah, here we go. It's obviously not these big green bits. There's two little back pieces in the bottom of here. There we go. Panic over. <laughs> Everyone can just relax, we found them. Right, there you go. That's just what we're after. I mean, those ones are green, so that could be confusing for some people, but. Start with the Z motor with a longer cable. And that'll be this one. Uh, that camera's gonna focus on that if I leave it there. Over here for a minute. Just <laughs> so long. Uh, uh, uh. Place the motor next to the bottom of the motor holder on the right side. The cable should be orientated backwards. Gently slide the motor into the holder. Make sure the cables don't get squashed. Do my best. Can we see what's going on? No, we can't. Let's see if I can get a better angle on this. Having this macro lens is literally the best thing. Oh, well that's a nice fit. And then that will pull up gently. That's super, super swish. Hello, other Adam. Good to see you. Up to 79 people. By the way, don't forget to leave a like if you're enjoying it. And if you're not enjoying it, not too sure why you're watching. <laughs> so yeah, if you if you want to leave a like, that'd be fantastic. Or subscribe for more videos like this. I mean, this kind of uh, live stream thing, it's kind of thing I do on a weekly basis now. Oh, I'm going to have to take that nut off. So yeah, Sundays, approximately 7 or 7.30-ish. It's when I do these live streams where we take a look at a printer, and either, either a really new one or a older one or something. Do this kind of unboxing and build sort of series. Or the main content is always like middle of the week, Wednesdays, around 5-ish, 5 p.m.? Yeah, 5 p.m. British summertime, which is GMT plus one. Anyway, push the motor fully inside. Put the four by M3 washers, one in each hole. This is going to be more difficult. <laughs> Gloves and washers do not get along. I have to pull the gloves tight over my fingers. <laughs> it's quite funny actually the amount of watch time. The amount of watch time has increased since lockdown started. Every cloud has a silver lining, eh? Use M3 by 10 screws to fasten the motor to the holder. Don't fasten them fully yet. M3 by 10 screws. Got it.
Oh, don't tighten them. So once I've tightened them, I'm now going to back them off a bit. So there's a little bit of wiggle room. I mean, I, even while they're a bit loose, I don't feel like that's going to wiggle very much, but... Maybe a little bit more. And presumably, do the other side. After the first screw, fasten the screw on the diagonal hole, then do the same for the other two holes. Oh, okay, yeah, we do tighten them now, we just tighten them in a diagonal pattern. Nice. Silly question, the green components, what material are they made of, and are they injection molded or 3D printed? All the light green parts you see are printed. And I believe they're PETG, but perhaps Wolfgang can correct me. I think we asked this in the last stream, so I should probably have remembered from that, but I don't. They look like PETG to me. And yes, they are all printed. It's um, one side. You may use a flexible hammer to gently hammer the rods into the motor holder. Huh? I do not feel like I need to use a hammer at any point. On both Z motors, install the Z screw covers. Should I have done the other? Yeah, this would have been probably best to do before putting it on here, I think, maybe. I think we probably should have done this side as well, sort of at the same time. Hmm, a bit less room for doing this one. Hmm. Hmm. Am I just being stupid? Yes. These light green, it's the same problem with the Prusa parts, they're really difficult to film. The lighting just seems to, I don't know, creates maybe a very slight UV effect of some kind, which uh, reacts with the camera sensors, like, I don't know, but they always look really, really overexposed. Depends what you're after, Johnny. I mean, personally, I quite like assembling printers. I mean, <laughs> this is not even my printer and I'm assembling it, so. Some people like assembly, some people don't. I guess if you're a business, then time is money. It may be more effective for you to pay for somebody else to do it. But, you know, I mean, it's whatever you like. I quite enjoy the building process, so having the opportunity to do so is kind of fun. So that's that on. 
and got these M3x10 screws again. Okay, so it's looking nice and straight now. You can start tightening the four corners. One, two, three, and four. Scooch this down just a little bit more. The one on this side is a lot looser. This one's kind of loose. I wonder if that would fall down over time and cause a bit of a jam. It's quite, it is rather loose. I did fit the little washers, yeah, four little washers into here. I did fit, yeah. Use a bit of glue. I don't have any glue, but I do. I'm not going to worry about those right now. Oh, thread lock. Right, I see. Yes, of course. I guess we could just drop a little bit in the top. Cool. So, X access assembly. Looks like I've in inadvertently got the wrong bearings out. Looks like all the little bearings. Something tells me this is different because I don't have five of those. I have four of these. Um, a couple of printed parts. Big chunky parts and this small part. Ah, ha, 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 this kit is not lacking gummy bears. I've just left them for Martin to consume afterwards. <laughs> it actually comes with an enormous bag of, of gummy bears. It's like pfft, huge. special pieces am I going to need? I reckon we just start and pick up the pieces as we need them. 
may be worth doing the injection of the stuff. Do the really messy bit? No, we'll leave the messy bit until we really need to. But maybe it's the first step. <laughs> Not quite. I've done this and I've done this in advance. So we've got all these, oh no, I don't have all of those. Did some of them, not all of them apparently. N3 nylocks on the back. So yeah, that's down in these holes, I think. Yeah, they were a little bit too loose to just stay in, so I ended up leaving them out until now. So two here. Hang on. Hex nuts at the top. Self securing on the back. So we've got two self securing or nylock and then two standard ones here. Place one stepper motor on the back of the holder and make sure that the cable runs through the cable holder. So this will be the last motor. Move that box out of the way now. Uh, I'm not sure, sure if there were any warnings about gummy bears, to be honest. Place one step motor on the back, place the thing over the thing, make sure the wire does the thing. So that goes this way up and that motor has to go around and up through here. The cable rather goes around and up through there, so just kind of like that. I think that's about right. I think I might just have this looking directly at my chest. <laughs> That looks about what we need. Hopefully we can then still screw from the front, presumably. Turn the motor around and insert M3 washers. M3 by 10 cap head screws. Oh, what's fallen out? One of these blasted. Somebody tells me that it's not going into the motor. There's no way that that screw Satan three by ten. I oh know I'm reading totally the wrong bit. What an idiot! Fight the fast one with M three by twelve. No wonder they weren't going in. They did seem a bit short.
I don't really like electronic screwdrivers too much, to be honest. Because you, you either end up tethered to a power source, or they run out just when you need them to not run out. Can you imagine me running out of power on a screwdriver halfway through a live stream? It'd be horrendously embarrassing. <laughs> I'm quite happy with these, although sometimes they make my hand cramp up a bit, it's not ideal. Maybe I should find a thing is I don't like cheap tools either, because they just end up breaking, or not doing quite what they're supposed to. Yeah, you're right. It could be a bit faster. Well, maybe I'll look into getting one. We'll see. Try it. We'll try it out. See what see what works. Trouble is, I don't want some big bulky thing as well. It's also much easier to gauge how much torque you're applying when you use a simple tool like this as well. And set one bearing from the top and one from the bottom. Make sure to push them far enough so that they touch the stop in the middle of the holder. So obviously we need to get all the bearings sorted for that. I wonder if we can continue with the other half. And we can do the, oh, the palm nut has to go in afterwards. And then that, and then that. Okay, I think now is the right time to do some more lubrication injection. I just realized I've still got the, uh, the Z assembly tool. Don't need that. Um, so, So what are these for? These have a... Looks like on this design, these go in here. Because there's no stop halfway down. Um, looks like there might be a design revision. Because there's also only four of these. That would be one, two, three, four. And then what are we using for the Y carriage? Two of these? The X carriage, rather. You need one of them. Oh yeah, that's what I thought. So. <laughs> so those three we definitely don't need because those were for this but we've got different bearings for that so those we'll put away definitely not required and then it looks to me like that and that right is standard for a x carriage so you've got the long one and the short one just like a standard prusa well i think prusa uses two but anyway and then it looks like these two would be for these Correct me if I'm wrong, but, um, Wolfgang, but that seems to be the intention. A process of elimination. This is where things are going to get really, really messy. <laughs> Let's get my nice tools out the way. I don't get grease all over them. My watch is vibrating like madness.
that is some very nice smelling lubricant. <laughs> Try and take off a good chunk of it. We don't want the outside to be completely dry. Some lubrication will help stop a little corrosion over time, but by and large, getting rid of a lot of it will definitely help with the assembly. So if we take this, so we've got these big injection nozzles that fit onto the tube of lubricant. Um, uh, well, should we do the other one now as well? Should we do them all now? Let's do them all now. And then we got the messy part all out of the way. So this lubricant uh, doesn't come with these nozzles, these are more printed parts by Caribou and there's like little channels in the side where the lubricant comes out. So you put it in here into the bearing and you align it with the slots in the bearing and then you squeeze. And with a bit of luck. you end up with a bearing packed full of this nice silicon lubricant. And some of the old lubricant comes out the bottom at the same time. So now we actually need to switch this for the long one. So this could be a bit messy. We almost need an extra cap to put on the end. I need a little thing to put on there because you can only put one on the on the thing. So this is the super duper long one. There's going to be a lot left in the in the middle, which is kind of unfortunate. But oh yeah, the yeah. As I said, the uh, the lube is there is to stop rusting in transport. So they're basically, I mean, I'm not a, I'm definitely not an expert on lubricants, but they basically have different uh, viscosities as well as a number of other different properties. But oh, let's get this in here. Do 
the viscosity is one of the dominant factors that determines differences, I believe, between one lubricant and another. Some are designed to be really thin, cover a coating really lightly. They get washed away more easily and don't stick around for as long, but they also have, they're less prone to picking up dirt. Or you have thicker lubes like this one, which stick around for a whole lot longer. Slightly more viscous, could pick up bit more, could pick up more dirt, but obviously they're inside a sealed bearing, so not a problem in this case. There's quite a lot of oil coming out, so I'm going to stick this under here. No, I'm not, because that doesn't really sit flat. Can you see? Yes. Sort of. Poke that down a bit. It's quite a lot of lubricant coming out. Can be quite a bit messier this process than. Right, it's just only really quite a messy process. But it does seem to pack the bearings quite nicely with lubricant. Right. Three in one oil is actually not super bad. It's it is quite thin, but it's not necessarily the worst thing. One thing you do have to be a bit careful of with thicker greases, especially in quite small bearings like this is because the bearing the, like the actual little balls are quite small and this is quite viscous you can get to a point where it's so viscous that the balls don't roll so as they are touching the rail the actual viscosity of the grease is preventing them from rolling which is like the opposite of what you wanted to do and that ends up then scratching into the rail i mean these are hardened rails so maybe not would scratch it but they would slide and that would be more noisy than it would if they would roll nicely so there is a balance to be had if it's not viscous enough then it will just kind of disintegrate or break down quite quickly and not last very long but if it's too thick it can actually have the opposite effect but I, i've used this on printers as well and it seems to be a, a good balance um hands are remarkably not greasy i suppose i did just wipe them so that's probably why
Uh, I think this is what we... Uh, let's try and get some of this off of here before we pack it away. Oh, that doesn't fit in there. That's not ideal, so we're going to take this one off. And put the little one on. And then we've got the big one full of grease, which is unfortunate. <laughs> oh, if only that cap, I mean, it's never going to happen, is it? Because it's threaded the same. But if you could put that cap that came from there on, that would be fantastic, but that's it's just not possible. So that's all going back in there. And let's get another piece of paper towel. Martin, that's very kind of you. I actually don't need it. I've got a tube as well, but if you are if you know you definitely don't want it, then uh, I could probably use it. I've got quite a few printers to maintain now. I suppose it saves a big mess arriving the other end, doesn't it? <laughs> In the event that you end up with lubricant all throughout your printer, that would not be desirable. <laughs> so, yes. Where did we get to? So we did the fastening the motor, insert the bearing. So obviously we're slightly different from the instructions here. We're inserting one bearing throughout the full length rather than one from the top and one from the bottom. Not sure which way is best to put it in. But... Something about like that seems great. Although, how do I... Wolfgang, do you have a method to centralise the bearing? At the moment it's kind of, there's a little gap at the top and there's no gap at the bottom. Should I have pushed it from the other side? I mean, largely speaking, it's probably not really going to matter. But it would be nice if it was like central or maybe touching the top where the palm nut's going to sit. Because that's going to go on here. I mean, normally I would push on the side, but I don't want to damage the bearing. I guess we can, where's that tool, that be a good one. Oh. There we go. So that sits at level to the top, where we can put the nut on. Oh yeah, you could use another bearing as well. Good shout. I've used the tool, which worked really well because it can push on the steel pacing. Uh, uh, not too greasy for the mouse, am I? That looks okay. Two M3 self securing nuts into the slots close to the hole for the palm nut. Insert the palm nut. Right, these on the Prusa have always been quite difficult. I mean, always. I mean, I've only done a couple. I should have done this a few times now. So, yeah, see. Oh, cool, that one's sort of in. We, oh, we're kind of decent angle, okay. Okay, okay. So now we've got to put this in and 
stop the screws before they fall back out. M3 washers, M3 by 14 miller, 14 mil screws. So we've got 14 uh, M3 washer, second M3 washer, second 14 mil screw. So that on there. This is really difficult with gloves. <laughs> Because there's like a an empty bit at the end. It can be difficult to do the small thing. Bearing should not touch the pom nut. I shall push it back down a little bit then. Easier said than done. <laughs> Have they both come out? Yes. Mm. The trouble with using another bearing is if it's not quite aligned, it will just miss. There we go, that's like with the chamfer now. That's good. Put these little nuts in again. And 3D Gustav has arrived. Yes, everyone go for the thumbs up. Perfect timing. Let's get some likes. Likes. <laughs> I'm never going to do that again. I'm guessing we don't do these tight yet. Tim three washes. Mill 14 screws, fasten the pole and don't tighten the screws yet, this will be done at a later stage. Use two M3x25 cafe screws for 10mm version, two M3x30 to fasten the bearings. Only tighten the screws until you feel that the screws grab on the self-securing nuts. Don't over tighten. Two M3x25mm. Oh, so for 10mm use two M3x30s. 30s I've obviously got in my special box of extra long screws. So that's flatheads, cap screws in 3 by 30 30 mil screws were too big for my little box, so <laughs> we've got a separate one. Yeah, I've got M3 by 30s. These are M3 by 30s. Please, camera. Please, camera, don't let me down. There we go. No, this way. Here we go. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's just to be just into the nylock there. Top one's definitely a bit tighter, uh, looser rather. Still really not very tight, which I suppose is what we want. So that's probably about right. Boom. Yeah, Streamlabs bot's a little bit overreactive, so apologies for that, but I'd rather that than have people be able to just spam, so. One thing I would say, Chai Cracker, is that uh, Build volume is really only one actually less important factor. It's one of those things that's either it's enough or it isn't. So whether it's a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, generally not too important. Get something that's the right size, but you tend tend to pay more for better quality and reliability and that sort of thing. So build volume is obviously, it's a very obvious metric that I think a lot of people pick up on when they're buying a first printer or a new printer. And it's certainly something I did Back in the day, like uh, I bought a printer with where I was working and they were just kind of interested in what's the build size, what's the cost, divide one by the other and you get a, a value. But if you think about it, like the build volume is like <laughs> one factor of all the possible like components and support and slicing and capability, rigidity and all these kind of other factors that are super, super, super important. Yeah, uh, the the bot, if you do something that it doesn't like, it will delete the comment that it didn't like as well as your like recent previous <laughs> ones. I might try and tone it down if I can find a way, because I know it, it is a little bit, it's a bit much, isn't it? We're not, I think everyone in this stream is reasonably grown up, so it's, <laughs> it's not so much of a problem. Yeah, for some people it won't be worth it, that's, that's fine. Some people it will, some people it won't. Slide the two GT3 pulley onto the motor shaft. The pulley has two fastening screws. Make sure one of them is aligned with the flat surface of the shaft. That's very standard. Good. So we've got the GT pulley in here. We've got the idler, which I'm pretty sure we're going to need fairly soon as well for the other end. We don't need that little baggie anymore. So we've got this go. Which way around does this one go? It goes teeth end in. Uh, what we like for visibility. Hopefully reasonable. Uh, we're gonna need a slightly smaller whistle. Let's get some more. So this is where it can be difficult to align. At the moment, I'm pretty sure it's going to be like all the other instructions. Wow, I got that pretty much spot on. <laughs> but as always, I'm not going to tighten it yet. It's going to be tight enough to hold it in place, but I'm not even going to tighten the other one because I know I'm going to be adjusting it. Leave a thin gap between the pulley and the motor face so as to avoid rubbing. Two pictures show the assembled motor holder. Oh, it doesn't say tighten it later. So we'll try to align it the best as we can now, I think. This is not super easy. So 
So just so you know what I was trying to align there. Sorry, now just, let me just. Cool. So looking down in that hole, you can see the pulley. Hopefully, if I point this in the right direction. And obviously, the pulley's got two faces on either side. So I was trying to make sure that both of those faces were visible in front of the plastic. So, in other words, the plastics here and the pulley faces should be just slightly inboard. If they're offset one side, then they're always going to rub down the plastic or on the metal face, and likewise on the other side. So, plastic here, pulley here, straight down the middle. Hopefully, I've eyeballed that just right. Yeah, precision reliability is number one, as long as the build area is large enough. I mean, for a lot of hobby users, you tend to just print what you can, and if it's too big, you do it in parts. It's only really for, well, in my experience, it's only really for commercial application where you have to have it like in one piece or something that you need a larger build volume. For most hobby users, a generally small, unless you're doing like specific cosplay stuff, that can be a lot easier if you've got an enormous printer but then maybe belts are more useful than little printers because you just need really long things and stuff like that. Like, if you've not got a specific project in mind that needs a specific size, I wouldn't worry too much about how big the build volume is. Um, 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 um. Yeah, I mean, I can see what you're seeing about printed parts, but I mean, they're plenty rigid, like they don't need to be any stronger. And by having them printed, not only can they can be updated. So if there's some improvements that they can do in the design, they can do them. Whereas injection molded parts have required a tool, which is literally tens, if not a hundred thousand pounds or more. And you don't want to be doing those more than once. Printed parts, you can adjust, you can improve, you can modify. You can replace one yourself. You can print a new one. if. You can print spares and all this kind of stuff. Like, there's a lot of advantages to having printed parts. I'm not saying it's perfect, but I wouldn't say don't immediately go in with the mindset that printed parts are rubbish because, quite honestly, they're just not. Have you seen the Naomi Wu 3D printer? Would love to get one of them as the length is infinite. I have seen, yes. The sorry, I keep scratching my face, but I don't want to do it with my. Slightly greasy hands. <laughs> so it looks to me weird, like rubbing my elbows, uh, not elbows, forearms on my head. Uh, yeah, the Naomi Wu 3D print mill, designed in collaboration or with consultation from the, uh, isn't it the White Knight belt printer? Yeah, it's cool, cool looking machine. It's weird how the belt, I'm, I'm not going to go off topic, I'm doing it. <laughs> Stay focused on what we're doing. Uh, follow the same steps with X idler. Yeah, so we need to do this. So a couple of nylock nuts go in the back. I can't get them out because no gloves. So I <laughs> shouldn't use a pair of tweezers. We need, oh, I put the M3 by 30 screws away. I got distracted by all the different conversations. 35, 30, 40, what did I, oh, they're right here. To 30 mils. A little wispiness here. So those are going in there. We need the bearing in the top. Pop. And as before, we're going to push this down a little bit extra. We didn't want it quite that far, but 
Okay. <laughs> I don't think we're going to get it in the middle. They're quite difficult to move. So I think we're just going to leave it like that because that's going to be the easiest way. <laughs> Easy and okay. It doesn't need to be any different. So that's not going to go quite. So we need to align this properly. Perfect. Move that in. Just came here from 3D Make a New Stream. What's going on? What is going on? That's a good question. <laughs> is 3D Make a New finished? Sometimes they join me afterwards. Um, so I'll tell you what's going on. We're building a printer. <laughs> uh, so this is the Caribou Mark 3S. I believe Joe's done one as well in the past. Um, uh, this is the second part. So we did one part earlier on. This is how long we are in. So we did about two hours last time and it looks like we're about an hour and 20 minutes into this one, which seems like more time than I thought it was. Could have sworn we haven't been going for that long. Anyway, what time did we start? Seven o'clock. Yeah, it's half past eight now. Blimey, hour and a half. Okay, cool. <laughs> All we've done so far is add these two parts. But we're getting there. I do a lot of talking, I think, and faffing about. Um, a couple of more nylock nuts go in here. Darn it. Maybe the other members of this stream can fill you in on what the progress has been. Three D printing, three D, three PN hold the record for the most expensive three D printer YouTube has broken. <laughs> what, what, what did he break? Surely the thirty eight thousand one that um, Joel's been using. It's got to be the most expensive. Or did he? Was there a more broken one than that? Oh, no, we don't want these. We want uh, nut um, washers. Two washers and two and three by 14 screws. Because we are doing this with <laughs> tweezers. Joel Towing broke the $38,000 one that he was using. He just broke the glass, didn't he? Kind of funny, really. I've not really been close or had interaction with any printers that are quite that expensive yet. Got a bit of wiggle on that. So we need some more nylock nuts and those are going in these other slots here, I believe. Oh, which way round are they going? Yes. 
So from that way, that way round, from this way, this way round. Oh, good tolerances on that hole. Okay, start with the motor holder. Make sure the cable is routed correctly. Routed correctly, routed, routed. Tomato, tomato. Cable is routed correctly. Push an X rod, 370 or 420 in my case. I really kind of want to measure these just to make sure I am using the right one. I'm going to just quickly try and find myself a tape measure. There's normally one sitting around here. Don't know if the mic microphone probably cut out when I did that. Hopefully it's back now. It's all very well having a good guess, but it's nice to get it right, isn't it? 380. So these are too short then. Three, hang on, what? Those are 380 and it says 370. 21 X rods, 370 times two. These are gonna be the Z rods. These ones are 420, but those are 380. I'm guessing they've increased the length and not updated the instructions quite. <laughs> appear to be the right ones. Oh, oh for 10 mil it's 380, okay. Start with the motor holder, make sure the cable is rooted, push a rod into the upper hole, make sure it's pushed all the way in by checking through the little window. You may be able to see the rod pushed in all the way. So we've got the little hole on this side where you can see that it's all the way in. Mm. This is requiring a bit more, a bit more oomph, I think. Ooh. Just hit my head on the camera. Okay, I think it's just the initial. I know it's gonna, <laughs> gonna need plenty of oomph. Is that all the way in? Yes. I'm going to stand up again. <laughs> it's not difficult to apply that force in that direction when sitting down. We have contact on both pieces. Let's set the bearing on the rods. Two bearings go on the upper rod, one on the lower rod. So we're not doing two and one, we're doing long and short. So blimey, this is heavy. Ooh, big oozy squeezy bearing on the top and little oozy squeezy bearing on the bottom. And we're going to wipe this excess off so we don't get it over everything else.
Now slide the rods onto the slider. The idle has a little window on the back for verification. Just in case, you may set the motor side on the ground and gently use a hammer to push the idler in. So, oh, blimey. Still got. I have a feeling I'm going to need to stand up. Yes, cannot push like that. Hmm. Right, I think some very gentle percussion might be required. I've lost my percussion device. The persuader has gone missing. Don't know what I've done with it. Well, there's that's missing. Let's have a quick break for 30 seconds and have a drink. Hmm. Well, I can't find that, so don't know where I could have used the hammer. I rarely ever use it, so. Oh, I think we got it. And we're in. Looks like we're reasonably square as well, actually, which is not too bad. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. Once it's in, it ain't coming out again. <laughs> Took a good portion of my body weight to push that in. Now slide the rods in. Easy, just slide them in. Job's good. Now make sure the rods and lead screws are parallel, which apparently we probably should have placed onto the frame already. Although again, they don't seem to be going in super easily. They could use, use some gentle persuasion as well, I think, to be honest. They're not. They don't just press in, that's for sure. Hmm. Hmm. Strange. I know what we need. We need a gentle drill bit.
There we go. Should be able to do the other side as well. Let's move this camera up. Apologies, we've missed a bit there. Uh, this side is what I'm doing. I'm not sure if that's totally in, but it'll have to be in enough because I don't think it will go any further. Make sure rods and leash grids are parallel. They seem to be rather parallel. Carefully insert the X axis onto the Z rods. Pay attention that the rods smoothly slide into the bearings. bit of goop come out the top so let's just clear that off thought for a minute I'd put it on back to front but I haven't at least I don't think I have no the two lead screws are the same length I mean, sure, they're probably different by like tiniest fractions of a millimetre, they're probably different, but they are the same. Once the lead screw reaches the palm, make sure both sides are roughly on the same height by turning the Z motors. You can screw the lead screw, yeah, there's that. Be able to push the Z axis down on the Z axis, just a few centimetres are enough. Right, cool. So we shall scooch this to one side. Although maybe not too much scooching necessary. What did we get this part for? We never used this part. Yeah, this, this is clearly supposed to go on here. There was never any instruction to tell me to actually use it. Pretty sure. Mm. Yeah. In the instructions, but it never actually tells you to put it on. Or how to put it on for that matter. I'll assume that we'll do it later on. Yeah, it didn't also use this and this. We should do it later on. Top extrusion. Comes with cable management. I thought it would do. It did look like a cable management doohickey. It just seemed, the only reason I questioned it was because it tells you you need it for that step but it didn't get used. So obviously you don't need it for that step. That's, but that's good. I didn't miss anything. Put the two corner brackets onto the X extrusion. It uses corner brackets and screws. So every possible mounting mechanism is <laughs> used. Onto the extra extrusion in the slot with the two smaller screw holes. Prepare the left and right Z top holder. 
I believe I have prepared those adequately in advance. Put the X extrusion onto the printer as seen in the picture with the T nuts of the corner brackets properly slotted into the inner slots of the Z extrusions. What? Put the X extrusion onto the printer as seen in the picture with the T nuts of the corner brackets properly slotted into the. Oh, was I supposed to. See, here only pictures one. Oh, it says top and side view. Top and side view. Only. What? There's two here, but there's only. Okay, yep. Yeah. We just need a couple more. <laughs> This is the downside, I think, of reusing pictures for several steps in the assembly guide. Obviously, the general process is the same, but sometimes you only want one side in, sometimes you want two. So if, you, if the pictures don't quite match up, it just gets a bit confusing. I mean, it's like, it's easy to work out, but it just takes that couple of extra seconds. Uh, give it time to put it on. It does. This is not trivial, is it? There we go. Move this a bit closer. And we'll get this. Point up here, I think. We haven't put the lovely coloured lights on today. Yay, pink. And blue. More blue. Loads of blue. The pink goes really weird on this camera, doesn't it? It looks really strange. But the B roll looks sweet. You know, we've got a nice blue in the background. <clears throat> oh, by the way, don't forget to leave a like if you haven't already. Looks like we're only half a likes relative to the number of people. So, just get some more. YouTube has also just suggested that my audio bitrate could be improved after moaning before that it was too high. <laughs> Thanks, YouTube. Uh, Screw in eight by 40 millimeter screws. I don't think I skipped a step, did I? Hopefully not. Let's get this big thing. What? Okay, but <laughs> I thought the steps were tighten the screws and then loosen the screws, but it's not. You do something else in between. So tighten those, tighten that lightly, slightly lightly. And then we take this and we're tightening can see X extrusion screw in the horizontal. I believe this one is the one that we're supposed to be doing. That seems pretty rigid, even though it's not fully tight yet. While pushing the corner brackets up against the X extrusion, screw in the M6x12, do this for both sides. Remove the big ones. Did I knock that out? Oh, I, I've just realized. 
Oops. That's going to be incorrect for a little while. This one that wants it to remove. Yes, these are 30 by 30 profiles. Insert one two slot knot in the back. It's still the top left, it's still the left top bracket. Uh, which is the left top bracket? This looks like it would be the left top bracket. Going to be another one of those requires a little bit extra persuasion sort of parts. This one you may use a hammer to very gently place the top mount onto the rod. Let's just make sure these screws are sensibly loose and not causing us any unnecessary issues. Oh, this is some more than gentle persuasion. I think we're going to go for another bit of a drill here. difficult to grip this thing. It's getting a bit tighter, but it's, um, do you have it? Well, I'm glad I didn't try to press those on manually. That would have taken a long time. No, this is just normal Bosch Pros professionals, the uh, blue ones. This is just like normal home Bosch. Can't afford Bosch professional. They're like super expensive. Electric screwdriver like this, I think on the professional range is like 220 pounds or something, whereas that was like 50 or 60. I do need my percussive tool. Where are the blooming Nora's, the hammer gone? I must have used it for something and left it in a daft place. I'm going to be back in two minutes. I'm just going to look for this hammer. I don't know if you can still hear me. We'll have a test when I come back. Do -do 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 -do. I have acquired the hammer. The hammer of truth. 
the hammer is straight. American screwdriver. That looks like about the right height. I'm guessing. No, we couldn't go any lower than that. That's as low as that's going to go, so that's good as is, I believe. Gently adjust the height of the tug bracket so that it's up a notch as aligned with the extrusion slot. Yeah, I think they're meaning this bit here, right? The little L shape. Yeah, so it slides. Continue on the right side, slide the extrusion to the left. So now we're going to do uh, this side over here. Insert the T-nut onto the right extrusion for the power supply holder. Oops. Attach the top holder in the same way as the other side. Apologies if I'm filming the back of my head as well. Oh, this one looks like it's going to have to go down a lot further. Oh yeah, the bottom wasn't in quite right. And this screw has just appeared. Huh? <laughs> That's bizarre. Did everybody see where this screw came from? Oh, it's just dropped out of this nut. <laughs> oh dear, that was kind of funny. Uh, this needs to go back up in here. It was only screwed like half a turn in, so obviously, hitting it with a hammer. This, this a hammer? Hitting it, hitting it with a hammer was enough to just Dislodge that slightly. We're still having a bit of a Gonna have to switch this around so I can see a little better, I'm afraid. Let's uh, move. Oh, we can still see pretty good. Good. Good, good, good. Good. Looks like we're actually a little smidgen too low now. That looks. Dandy. So that now slides and that will clamp nice. Nice, 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 nice. This is a beast. Oops, a lazy. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Yes. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up or like button. Whichever you prefer in terms of terminology. Attach the top holder in the same way. Insert one T-nut into the top slot of the X extrusion for the spool holder. Can do. Ta-da! Prepare the extrusion covers. Already done. Insert. Oops. <laughs> Try not to fall off the tear in the process, that'd be good, wouldn't it? I'm 
I'm just guessing this is what we're doing now. Use a right angle tool to make sure that there is a 90 degree angle between the X and the Z. Okay, well, I'm going to put these in loose. As long as they're sub flush, that'll be fine. Now we need this. Got our right angle tool that I've lost. Here it is. Gonna move this down a little bit further so it's out of the way of my right angle tool. Tool for right angles. Going to put a little bit more on that one actually. There we go. Now fasten, but don't fasten too tight. Okay, okay. That's fastened, but not too tight. And then it's these. These are not super easy. Pretty glad I got ball heads, ball head allen keys. I think this would be difficult without. Fasten the two M6 by 12 screws. There we go. Heated bed. Ooh. <laughs> uh, sure. So let's have a quick tidy up of this lot. Okay. So how long have we been going for? That is two hours. I think that might be a good place to stop then. Two hours is quite a good length. I was going to do some more, but I don't want to get so close that the only thing we have left to do is the print because I'm not going to do a live stream just for a print. 
but I think if next episode we've got extruder to do, cable management, and then print. That seems like a good two hour amount. Yeah, power supply as well. Why? Cable management could take a little while. Maybe we could do the bed now. I think we'll do the bed now and then we'll stop. Yep. Put the heat bed carriage to the front of the frame. Place the spacer over each of the nine threaded holes for the heated bed. Not a lot I can do about the logo on this one, I'm afraid. This is just going to have to be what it is. So and then I can rest before getting ready for my work week. Exactly. Because I do actually do work as well. Place the spacer over each of the nine threaded holes for the bed. Carefully place the heat bed onto the spacers and check that holes are aligned with the spacers. There's absolutely no way I'm going to manage that. <laughs> From experience of doing this for the Prusia, there's no way. <laughs> you end up, well, the way I did it, I tried putting it on and then you have to like move it a bit. They will start falling off and going all over the place. Uh, place a spacer over each of the nine. Yeah, carefully place the heat bed. Check the holes. Screw the bed. Using these nine things. These are long objects you trust to be straight and push it against the front of the Z extrusions. Oh, I see. We could do well. Let's get the bed on using my method. I do need the correct Tulio. So that's one, and then I take these one by one. In fact, it might be easier with tweezers, I'm not sure. The trouble is these are metallic, so they tend to get grabbed, whereas these are plastic, so they are. Uh, it's just the magnets a little bit more. Well, obviously the plastic is not magnetic, but there is steel further up. Oh, nope, we've got it.
I found the wrong way. There we go. Let's get this down here. Ooh. That's the slight downside of this method. Sometimes one of them shoots out. Uh, I've been printing, well, not necessarily recently, but I do tend to print with, uh, a, I do print with ASA instead of ABS, so in places where I would normally, ooh, I just, <laughs> I noticed something that the uh, idler tension, not tension, the screw on the uh, thing is not tight. Uh, so let's get that tightened in. Not sure why I missed that. Anyway, back to what we were doing. What were we doing? The bed screws, that's the one. This is quite a slow process, isn't it? <laughs> One more time. Right, so all of those are now loose but attached. the spacer, carefully place the heat bed onto the spacers and check that the holes are aligned with the spacers. Screw the bed using the nine screws. Use a long object which has to be straight and push it against the front of the Z extrusions. Check if the chosen object is perfectly aligned with the lines on the heat bed. If it isn't, loosen the nine screws and tighten them again while you hold the heat bed straight. So if we put in this and then we find a straight thing Anyone got any straight things? Um. How about a whopping fat 12 millimeter steel rod? That ought to be rather straight. Don't even get any straighter than that. I feel like as soon as I'm tightening these down, it's realigning itself anyway. I don't think you can really align it because they're countersunk screws, they're gonna pull in a direction anyway. They're kind of self-aligning. There's no adjustment in the holes below because they're tapped. I suppose in the older design, uh, in the design iteration before this, the the bed 
was not a tapped hole. It was a through hole, I believe. So you would have much more play in where you could put it, whereas with this, holes are tapped. So it's going to go where it goes. Yeah, these are definitely spacers rather than washers. Prepare the heat bed cover top by inserting this presumably that's two M3 hex nut into the holes on the back. Looks like this piece. And that also looks like this piece. I don't know. Where is it? Here. Place the top part of the cover on the heat bed. Align it with a screw hole in the bed. <laughs> Ignore the icy box, which shouldn't be there. Uh, this looks to me like this goes this way around. I think we might need to cut these zip ties on this. Although, can we do no? This doesn't sit on there particularly squarely. Oh, there we go. Just needs to go a little bit further forward. Concerned about the um, fence to wire, so yeah, see if it's going to get caught if we're not careful. Right, that looks like it's in the right place. I've totally lost where chat is at, so. <laughs> uh, push through, place the heat bed cover top on the contacts as seen in the picture and push through an M3 by 12 millimeter countersunk screw through the hole and screw it with a nut from the other side. Yeah, I forgot to do that, didn't I? I rushed ahead, so we should have countersunk screws, uh, 3x10, 3x12. It doesn't say what type of nut to use, I would assume nylock. It 
doesn't really say for my lock. Yeah. I would want to put a washer head as well. It doesn't say to use a washer, so we might not have enough. So let's just stick with a nylock nut. Cut off a 32 centimeter piece of the provided 6.4 millimeter tech flex tube. Heat up both ends short with a light. No luck from the rod, got it. A two centimeter piece of the Friday 6.4 millimeter tube, so that's going to be. I'm guessing that's the really long piece. This one looks like that one. Thirty two centimeters. We've maybe a millimeter spare because we're going to be heating the ends. Hopefully, these little scissors will work. are excessive at this point. Oh. This extra step down the bed is taking longer than I thought. Don't know what I was expecting to be honest. Which is the end I just cut? Looks like this end. Hopefully, I don't feel like that's going to be enough. Um, got a lighter here as well, hopefully. Try not to set the whole place on fire, right? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
It does appear to be self-extinguishing though, which is nice. Cool, that's worked much better than the heater. It's probably not quite 32 centimeters long now, but let's hope it's long enough. Uh, 30 centimeters provided text exclude. Heat up both ends shortly with a lighter slide the heat bed cables and the thermistor cables inside the tube. This also might not be super easy. Not sure what the easiest way to do this would be, whether it's to try and slide them in the end or slide it in from the side like I'm doing. It seems like this sideways actually working reasonably well, so I'm going to assume this would be the best way to do it. Could do with maybe something just to slide down. Nice. Maybe slide back like this. Yes. Now we're talking. Look at that. Nice. Cut a 34 centimeter of the nylon filament and slide it into the Techflex tube. Clearly, this black is the nylon filament. Funny story, I have a piece of nylon filament like this too, just for this exact purpose. <laughs> Let's take it all out of the packaging, it's going to be easier to help. I don't know what's going on in chat, so hopefully you're all enjoying whatever chat's talking about. Right, leaves about a centimetre sticking out each end. Enclosures for probable ASA printing, I see. Make sure about one centimetre is out of the end. Yes, slide the Techflex tube and nylon filament under the cover. In we go.
fasten another part with two M3 by 12 screws. So this is where you've got to be really careful with where that wire for the thermistor is going. Yes, I know the bottom has fallen off. <laughs> Just getting the screws started. So like that's not grabbed. No, it's not. sure that's going to reach. M3 by 12 screws. With all that stuff in that, I can't see this going in personally. I don't think that's getting anywhere close. This is low, there's so much bulk in this that I don't think that screw is going to get far enough to go through that. That's definitely not long enough, that screw, 100%. Uh, for the new cover, you need M3 by 16. Presumably there are M3 by 16 screws in here. I don't remember seeing M3 by 16 countersunk screws. M3 by 8. Plastic washers. M3 by 16. Here they are. Was it still a... Um, 
Wolfgang, was it still a 12 mil countersink for the the one at the front, or could that do with the 16 mil as well? It doesn't look like it's quite grabbing the nylock. That's a good point. You could probably do this when it's not attached to the carriage, couldn't you? Especially with all the turning over. Yeah, 16 as well. Okay, let's go back a couple of steps in and take that off. Okay, now I need something to grab that nut. Oops, a bit. There we go, that's looking better. And you've got nice long screws going through here too. Even these look like they're not going to reach. I haven't put the 12 more ones back in, have I? I oh, know, we've got it, we've got it. We're there. Well, that's pretty secure. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I feel like that could have been a lot easier not on the printer. But still, we, we've made it, it's on there. It all fits nice. This does come with a Pinder probe, yes. Right, final look at the heat bed cover with the sleeve. Oh yeah, the other ones are the other way up, I didn't even notice, but yes. I feel like we've got probably still two, uh, <laughs> two more episodes of building before we get this done. But I'm definitely calling it there now, that's two hours and 40 minutes. So that's the end of the bed assembly though. We've got wires ready to be connected into other things. So, looking pretty good.
we shall be obviously continuing this next week, so Sunday, Sunday o'clock, Sunday evening o'clock. <laughs> And there'll be a video out on Wednesday, hopefully, still making it. So hopefully I have enough time. Uh, yeah, I feel quite exhausted. I know what you mean, it's out of my price range too, which is why Martin's kindly donated this one for me to assemble before I pass it on to him. Doesn't it look sweet though? It's like all the upgrades for a Prusa that you'd want. It's <laughs> so stiff. That is an absolute tank. Very, very cool. It does indeed start to look like a printer. We're really getting there. It's funny how very few pieces, I mean, overall, there's a lot of pieces, but how even what looks like a lot less pieces than we started with still takes a very long time to get anything done. But yeah, it is starting to look really good. I'm really happy with how it's moving along. A couple of, a couple of little challenges with updates needed to the assembly manual, but nothing that we've not been able to come overcome with relative ease, so that's good. There's not been anything missing or damaged, so bravo. Yes, I think that's going to be it for today. Don't be sorry, Martin. That was the, that was the exactly the entire purpose. This is exactly what I spent, want to spend my time doing. So don't apologize at all. This is perfect. I'd much rather be building this machine than doing like four screws on a Creality printer. <laughs> anyway, that is going to be it for me today. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the stream. We do streams like this every Sunday, so we'll be continuing this one next week and probably the week after, but then we'll move on again to other printers and we've got some other really exciting stuff coming up for that, so super excited. If we end up with a bit of a backlog, I might try and do a, like a second midweek stream or a Saturday stream as well, but this one we'll keep for Sunday because I know that's like the time. So other ones like a little bit less popular. This one we'll be doing next Sunday. Wednesday will be the next video this week. Provided I get it finished, it will be another really interesting uh, like 3D printer testing video. So if you enjoyed the one about the Himera um, maximum speed printing, maximum flow rate, then you're going to love, going to love, you're going to love this next one too. But yes, that's it from me. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you for sticking around. It's been a long one. Hopefully it's been valuable for those that are maybe looking at getting one and wanting to see what the assembly process is like, and for everyone else, just a nice experience to <laughs> watch a printer come up into a fully finished machine from nothing but parts. Uh, 3D Gustin's not here anymore, but obviously thank you for him for, uh, obviously not only doing the firmware for this, but moderating the stream as well. Thank you for Wolfgang for uh, sticking around, answering all those questions, very helpful for you, uh, well, very helpful that you've done that for me. So thank you very much. Of course, thank you to Martin for the machine. It's not a gift. I'll be passing it on when we go. Anyway, I think I've said thank you quite enough now. And I think we're definitely done. So <laughs> hopefully I've not missed anyone. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now, if I can remember.